Good morning. morning. Happy Happy Easter. We have permission to live stream our service this morning from one license, license number A731986. Thank you. Enjoy the service.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 118. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord is triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous man. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has, has become, become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me. 
because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So while it was still dark, Mary arrives at the tomb and finds the stone has been removed. The entryway is wide open. Mary was grieving. So imagine how she must have felt when she realized that Jesus' body was not there. It's it odd mysterious, uncomfortable, a little scary. They're just a few descriptors that come to mind. And then she runs to share this news with two other disciples who run to the tomb. So perhaps we are in a strange, uncomfortable space and time today as we proclaim our alleluias, Christ is risen, we're doing so in the shadow of all those that we've lost to COVID-19, in the wake of mass shootings, chaos at our southern border, mass unemployment and food insecurity, a deepening crisis of pandemic-induced loneliness, depression, anxiety, and the ongoing scourge of racial tension, violence, and injustice in our streets and our institutions. So we've endured quite a lot between last Easter and this one. We've witnessed or sustained losses on a scale that we've barely begun to register, much less to grieve. We're weary, we're numb, we're bewildered, we're sad. So it may not be so easy to absorb and celebrate the Easter story, even though we know we know it is the most consequential story that we have ever heard. Perhaps we need to practice a slow Easter, as Debbie Thomas shares. She said, this year I'm allowing myself to practice a slow Easter, an Easter that takes root within me as imperceptibly as seeds break into life beneath the earth. Anyone who grows green things knows the process of transformation is hidden from our eyes. Every spring, it's shrouded in mystery. It has a timeline of its own, and we tremble at its seeming fragility. And yet, and yet, the tender shoots break through the soil and new life emerges every time. Likewise, I believe that there is life we cannot see, the life of God hidden within us, tenacious, dynamic, and sure. It might take time to emerge and flourish, but the life itself is certain. Every gospel account of the resurrection tells us that the most important event in history happened in total darkness. Sometime in the pre-dawn hours of a Sunday morning 2,000 years ago, a great mystery transpired in secret. No sunlight illuminated the event. No human being witnessed it. And even now, centuries later, no human narrative can contain it. The resurrection exceeds all of our attempts to pin it down because it's a mystery known only to God. 
Whatever the raising was and is, its fullness lies in holy darkness, shielded from our eyes. All we can know is that somehow, in an ancient tomb on a starry night, God worked in secret to bring life out of death. Somehow, from the heart of loss and misery, God enacted salvation. Our diocesan staff recently had Courtney Cowart speak to us about enduring beyond the crisis. Courtney is a theologian who witnessed two great catastrophes in recent American history, the 9-11 tragedy at the World Trade Center and the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. And she actively participated in the healing of both. She shared a story about Grace, who had suffered much loss in New York City on 9-11. Grace went to the World Trade Center site one year later, and as she was standing there, she heard birds chirping loudly. As she looked for those birds, she saw them in their nests. And as she looked more closely, she realized that the birds had used debris from that awful day to build their nests. The nests contained charred paper and tattered cloth. They had taken the remnants from that day and made them into building materials for their house. Of course, the birds had no idea it was from a tragedy. And then she felt the tears come, tears of awe and wonder. Somehow, transformation was taking root. Often it is only in retrospect, as we look back at the gravesides of our life, that we see how God has opened our hearts to understanding. Poet R.S. Thomas describes the process this way in his poem, The Answer. There have been times when, after long on my knees in a cold chancel, a stone has rolled from my mind, and I have looked in and seen the old questions lie folded and in a place by themselves, like the piled grave clothes of love's risen body. The Easter story is filled with powerful images wrapped in evocative mystery. There's the ominous, dark unknowing of the beginning of that first day, the faithful disciple longing to be close to her teacher, the newly unblocked opening, dazzling angels in place of a dead body, and then turning around, the Holy One that she is looking for is right beside her, speaking her name, seeing Christ, the Anointed One, in a new form. Jesus instructed her to go and tell the others, but first there's personal guidance. He says, don't hold on to me. So do you sense Jesus saying that he is in flux? Everything is in flux. And from now on, there is a new reality, the resurrection reality. Time and space are redefined. Matter is redefined. Everything is shimmering with revolutionary newness, movement, and divine possibility. It's only the end if you see it as the end. I'd like to see it as a new beginning. The narrative of Mary's experience shows us a pattern of spiritual movement from confusion to clarity, from unknowing to illumination, from suffering to joy. It is transformational movement. The door is wide open. The stone is rolled away. And love is knocking at our doors. So may we on this Easter day join in prayer together to hear the birds chirping and see anew with resurrection eyes because Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. <laughs> Please stand as you are able and join me as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and, heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascends into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Christ has burst through the tomb of death, victorious over its power, revealing the triumph of light over every darkness. In thanksgiving, we offer our prayers, responding, hear us, O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for the resurrection of Jesus, who empties our spiritual tombs and reveals the way of abundant life, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. For all of the world in this pandemic, especially the leaders of the nations, especially Joseph, our president, that they may guide us <clears throat> to the, guide the world to a greater fulfillment of its quest for freedom, justice, healing, and peace. Let us pray. Hear us, for the doctors, nurses, scientists, and all medical personnel who are working tirelessly for an end to the coronavirus, especially for our vaccination process, and for all who have been affected in various ways by this virus. Let us pray. For the innocent in troubled places <clears throat> and wherever strife stifles harmony, that the actions of the global community may free all who are suffering or imprisoned unjustly. Let us pray. For the church, for the bishops throughout our Anglican communion, and especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, bishop of our diocese, and for each of us, that we may embrace the mystery of the Pascha and give witness to the living Christ in our midst. Let us pray. For all who suffer in mind, body, or soul, for whom Christ is risen with healing in his glorious wings, and especially for those listed here who are near to our hearts and those we now name silently or out loud. Fran and Susan that they may be comforted. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. For those in our family, <clears throat> parish family celebrating birthdays this week, Gail Craven, Sherry Dietz, Diane Evans, and Stacy Heston. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. For all who protect and serve, as well as their families, the police, the firefighters, emergency medical personnel, and those serving in the military, especially those listed here 
who are near to our hearts and those we name silently or out loud. Let us pray. In thanksgiving for all who have gathered with us virtually today to share in this Easter service, that we may each be changed by the message of new life, growing richly and fully into the forgiving compassion of Jesus. Let us pray. Hear us, the risen Christ. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, especially for William and Lois Badiger and Rufus and Stella Badiger, for whom the altar flowers are given, and for all our loved ones for whom the glorious Easter flowers are given. For our life is hid with Christ in God. Let us pray. Hear us, the risen Christ. Hear our prayers on behalf of those for whom we pray, and give us peace in this time of our Paschal rejoicing for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. It's great to see some people. (laughs) Are there announcements? Just have a few. This Thursday uh, at noon, we have our, our healing service via Zoom. Uh, you can look for the, the link in a constant contact email on Wednesday. On Saturday, April 17th, AHA, Arts Holding Hearts and Hands, is organizing a Coatesville Community Cleanup Day. So if you want to help clean up, especially the area around Trinity, at 1 p.m. on Saturday, April 17th. They'll have all the, the materials for you to, you know, the, the bags, the, the gloves, etc. And the rain date would be uh, the 18th. But Saturday, April 17th at 1 p.m., 1 to 3. And the meeting place is in front of the community garden, 3rd and Lincoln. And at this point, I would like to have a dedication. We have a brand new uh, Paschal candle. And this candle was uh, purchased in memory of Raymond Hulse. And we also have a new, a new altar cloth, beautiful altar cloth. And this was um, donated by the Women's Group of Trinity. So I'd like to do a little dedication of both. First, the Paschal candle. Before the throne burn seven lamps of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. You, O Lord, are my lamp. My God, you make my darkness bright. O Heavenly Father, who revealed to us the vision of your Son in the midst of the candlesticks and of your spirit in seven lamps of fire before your throne, grant that this paschal candle to be kindled for your glory may be to us a sign of your presence and the promise of eternal light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the altar cloth. This is the offering which you shall receive from the people, gold, silver, and bronze blue and purple and scarlet cloth, and finely woven linen. O Lord my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and splendor. O glorious God, all your works proclaim your perfect beauty. Accept our offering of this altar cloth and grant that it may adorn this sanctuary and show forth your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you. 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Easter communion is dedicated to the memory of those for whom the altar flowers are the Easter flowers are given. Walter and Myrtle Baynard, Clarence and Beatrix Green, Kenneth Bush, James J.J. Miller, Joe Kennedy, Linda Tools, Peter Bush, Sandra Hill, Antoinette Bush Flowers, Franklin Butcher Sr. Walter Cheatham, Dorothy Bingham, Beatrix Kenneth and Carolyn Eccles, Franklin William Marion Gordon, Esther and John Fleck, Robert Fleck, William and Anna Kralchuk, Roseanne Morrison, the loved ones of Ruth and Clifford Gardner, Virginia S. Keating, Mr. and Mrs. Victor J. Shanley Jr., Myrtle and Joe Kirkner, Frank Robbins, Catherine and Howard Robbins, Marie and Ward Evans, Mamie and Fred Korn, Louise and Richard Cobb, Dick Kutz, Ann Beach, Ned Moran, Julie Kramer, the Devereaux and Bacchius families, Dominique Jennings, the loved ones of Pam Smythe, Rudolph and Anna Reichenbacher, Michael Reichenbacher, Richard and Mary Dietz, and those who have died from COVID-19. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy.
and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. And grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time gather us with blessed Cyril, our patron saint, and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. Now as Christ our Savior teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus. gifts of God for the people of God. Now for our live stream congregation, please join me in the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Our service continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve our risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 